Zero accounting software, export balance sheet to Excel. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, zooming in a bit, holding down control and up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in. Opening the demo file, but doing so with the reset icon, which is gonna reset the data and open the demo. We're then gonna be opening up another tab up top so that we can then put our reports in it by right-clicking the tab, duplicating it right clicking the duplicated tab and duplicating it again we do this every time so i'm doing it fairly quickly here in the middle tab opening up the major financial statement of the balance sheet and then in the tab to the right accounting drop down we're going to open up the income statement or profit and loss report back to the tab to the middle and we're changing the dates and bringing the date on up to 2022, end of the year and okay. So in prior presentations, we've been looking at the balance sheet in particular, and then thinking about how we can organize our data to provide it to say a client or supervisor, possibly at the end of the week or the end of the month or the end of the quarter or year, for example. Last time we exported multiple reports as a PDF file, and then thought about how we can give them possibly in the format of a uh, an email with attached files or on a cloud drive possibly that will have a link or have these files within it. Now we're gonna be exporting the files to Excel and use Excel to then try to combine them together on one PDF file so that we can do kind of a fancy little trick here to try to get all the reports on one PDF file. We're only gonna be looking at the balance sheet reports, but remember that uh, when providing the reports, you gotta think about which reports you want to be providing and the balance sheet and income statement and variants of them will clearly be some of the two reports that you'll be including. We're only focusing on balance sheet at this time. So uh, I'm gonna reconstruct some of our reports. I'll just keep the balance sheet standard this time and some of our adjustments have been that we're gonna say, let's get rid of the decimals and update it. Now, last time I made a summary balance sheet, I won't do that again. I'll just have a standard balance sheet and then we'll export it here. So I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna export it to Excel. Now to do that, clearly you do need Excel in order for it to do it. If you got that, it'll open up here. I'm gonna drag that into my folder. So I'm gonna say, this is the folder that I wanna put it in. I'm gonna drag it into the, the folder and then I'm gonna, let's actually put it well, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say, let's rename it and I'm just gonna call it reports. I'm not just calling it a balance sheet because I'm gonna put all the other reports onto this uh, one uh, tab here. So if I open it up, it looks like this. So I would typically check the viewpoints if I go from here to here to see that it fits on one page. And notice that it's, it's going to the left due to the formatting you can reformat it in Excel. So if you wanted to change something like these items, which you couldn't change in Xero, Excel is a great tool to be able to do that. Excel is also a great tool if you want to take this data as like your starting point and then construct something from it, uh, then, then you can use Excel uh, you know, to export to Excel and to do that. If I wanted to view this in a print view, I can go to the print view. It looks like this. Now, again, it's kind of up in the corner here. So you could, I won't get into formatting to kind of adjust it at this point in time, but clearly you could do some fairly common or simple formatting to space this out into the middle of the page. 
So I, I won't get into that now, but obviously there's a lot of formatting options that you can do once you have it in Excel here. So what we're gonna do after this is add another tab with the other reports down below and then try to export this to one PDF file. So let's go back on over just to show you how that would work and let's customize our balance sheet a bit. So let's make the, the, uh, the comparative balance sheet. So let's say we had a month comparison and then, so there's our comparative balance sheet. And then I'm going to go to the layout down here and we added a difference column. So I'm going to do this fairly quickly because we did this before just to show how to do it a couple times. And I'm going to say, this is going to be a formula column, formula column, which is going to be the 2022 minus 2000, uh, I'm sorry, December minus November. So there's that one, and this is gonna be not a percent, and this is gonna be, I'll call it the change. And then I'm also gonna add another column, formula, which is going to be the, the change divided by the prior period, which was November. That one I want as a percent. Let's check it out, update it and check it out. And let's see what it does. It's got to think because that was a pretty complex thing we asked it to do right there. But then in case I should have a change percent, let's edit that one again. And let's change the name on this one. Let's call it like change percent or percent change probably would sound better, but whatever. It sound better, but whatever. That's what I'm talking about. So now we're going to say there it is let's call this a comparative comparative balance sheet so that looks good let's just export this i'm going to say let's export it to excel boom i'm going to open it up bam and then i'll just copy the whole thing now because i want to pull this over into my other tab into my other sheet so I'm going to select a triangle up top and just control C, copy the whole thing or right click and copy. And then I'll go back on over to this one, add a tab, make sure you're in a one or selecting the entire sheet and then control V or right click and paste normal and boom. So now we've got those two. I'm going to see layout tab. So it all fits on one page. That looks good. Double click on the tab below. I'm going to call this a comparative balance sheet comparative balance sheet. Now, I'm not gonna get into the formatting in detail here again, but I, I just wanna show that what I'm gonna do at the end of the day, if I go to the first tab and then print, I'd like to then print both of these on to one PDF file. So I'm gonna say, I wanna use a cute PDF printer. That's a free tool that you could find online. I'm not like advertising for them. Any kind of PDF printer would work, but if you don't have one, you might wanna use a tool like that. that that's one you can look into at least. And then instead of printing the current sheet, I imprint the entire workbook. That allows us to print the balance sheet and then the second balance sheet. Now, again, we could format them a little bit better here so they're not centered, but that's a nice little trick that we can use to get everything on a one sheet fairly easily without like an Adobe Acrobat program or something like that. So I'm gonna close this one back out, not save it. And we had another one uh, that we were going to do like a vertical analysis. Let's say we did a vertical analysis and I'm going to try to try to do. Uh, well, let's open up another tab. I'm going to right click and duplicate the tab, open up another balance sheet, accounting drop down and then balance sheet. Also note that you could memorize this report once you changed it. Just we, we saw that last time, but I could say I want to save that as a custom and I'll call it a comparative com comparative balance sheet. And you might wanna number them, like this might be the second report after the normal balance sheet, save it. And then if I go back into the first tab, accounting dropdown reports, and then I go into that custom, we can save it right there. So it'll be nice and easy to do going forward. That's really uh, a nice tool. Okay, so then let's do it again. We're gonna say, uh, this is going to be dates. Let's bring it on up to the custom date of 2022 is the year 31st update. Let's get rid of the decimals. And then let's make a vertical analysis, which is, which is the other one we did. 
So layout tool, I'm gonna add another column, but I'm gonna do a percentage column type thing. And then they've got this nice 2022% of assets. That's all we gotta do. 2% of assets, looks good. Let's update it and boom, another one has been done. Another one bites the dust or has been made. Another one rose from the dust, rose from the ashes. Another one rose from the ashes. So this is gonna be vertical, vertical analysis, which I might not have spelled right. And now I hate that word, that word, analysis, something like that. I'm gonna copy it and then we could say custom save and we could say this is number two vertical analysis balance sheet boom see this gives me a spell check down here there it is there it is okay whatever so it's spelled wrong so what so what anyways we're going to export it you don't want to spell it wrong don't spell it wrong that makes you look bad when you give it to the customer but this is just an example it doesn't need to be perfect or it'll take all day. I would take more time on it, but so then I'm going to pull that up, copy the whole sheet with the triangle, control C copy, and then go back on over here, add a tab, double click on the name. This is going to be vert balance sheet or something like that. BS sheet. You could put your cursor on a one. If it's not on a one, you can't paste it because I copied the entire workbook. So it's gotta be on A1 or the entire sheet. And then you can paste, boom, it fits on one page. So we could do more formatting here, but the point that I want to make is that once we get it in Excel, we could do other adjustments that we couldn't do possibly in zero, possibly changing these items, for example, or just to look and feel. Maybe I want different formatting on the numbers or, or to make red numbers or you know to make the negatives red or something like that, you know? So I can then, but I want to say file print right here and say that we want to save it to the workbook and then PDF printer. So now I'm going to print this whole thing out using the printing thing, which will put it on one PDF file. That's the thing I want to focus in on at this time. So I'm just going to call it reports. So I'm going to put it on the top of my desk, which has a bunch of stuff on it. Bear with me. There's a bear with me. Hold on. Okay, I see where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right there. Reports, save it. And so now we can provide the data uh, to somebody else by giving them either the singular reports that we did here, or we can we can do it by, by having uh, the Excel file, which isn't normal that we would give them an Excel file, but then we use the Excel file to make the PDF. So if I open up the PDFs, it looks like that. So so notice the formatting is a little bit different in Excel, but it, it allows you to give one PDF. So that means you don't even really have to number it like you kind of we did here. Summary comparative. Let's say this was number two. Why do I have two number ones? You can't have two number ones. What is it a tie? It's ridiculous. Now I deleted the name. Rename rename where's the rename rename comparative number two comparative balance sheet so we kind of had to number them here in order to so that we can indicate which order they want to be opened in uh, but also notice the formatting they give you this this full page kind of formatting so it's spaced out nicely over here you can do that in Excel. You can you can clearly go into an Excel and, and space it out. Notice that that when you're thinking about the formatting that you might do in Excel versus the formatting you do in Zero, it would be nice to do as much formatting as possible in Zero, because then you can of course save it, uh, save it, the custom save, and you can just reprint your reports automatically from Zero each time. The more formatting that you have to do, like outside in Excel then you have to you have to do that forming formatting every time so that's that's the point and zero has some great tool you don't have as much flexibility possibly in zero in some ways at least like some desktop versions allow you to change the font and stuff like that 
and, but you do have the capacity to change the title and you have a lot of capacity to put added, you know, formulas, vertical analysis, comparative analysis using this tool and the order that you want to add account numbers or to not add account numbers, a lot more, more flexibility than elsewhere. And that's great because then you can do more stuff inside the software and then any added formatting that you want to do, uh, you, you might export it to Excel, which could include, of course, trying to get everything on one page uh, in Excel and then any added just formatting things that you would like to do, such as changing the font or changing the look and feel of it or spacing it out differently and whatnot, deleting subtotals. Or, but you could do you could delete subtotals and stuff in zero, which is really pretty cool. But that's that.